what strategies can be used to resolve arguments? Answer. Well, I used to think that a relentless condescension, refusal to concede any point, and a tireless determination to prolong the dispute would reliably wear out opponents. They would walk away, leaving me the victor. However, I soon realized that bullying people into silence, as can happen on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, turns out to be a very poor way to persuade them you are right. Anger is an avaricious emotion; it takes more credit than it deserves. Therefore, controlling one's temper and bringing an end to conflicts are vexatious. But there are ways to get your point across more effectively, avoiding shouting into the abyss. And becoming a master persuader. In the previously mentioned case between me and the client, I can just tell you exactly what I did with that client and highlight the strategies I used. Firstly, I listened to her. I let her speak. Secondly, I was reasonable. I was prepared to lose. Thirdly, I saw the funny side. Just smile and think. People are like that. It's human. It's the human mosaic, and that's what makes life beautiful and interesting. People can be ridiculous and amazingly silly and absolutely infuriating, but just don't take it so seriously. So the first thing I said to that client, in a sort of humorous, self-deprecating voice, was, "Okay, please stop crying. It makes me feel bad." I'm just a soft, stupid female, and I don't know how to handle other crying females. And everyone is looking at me now, thinking, think, thinking I am a very bad guy. And ah, she smiled, stopped crying, and I took it from there. It was actually pretty easy—a piece of the proverbial cake, as they say. Okay, so now it is undeniable that. Just because we disagree with someone, it doesn't have to become a heated exchange. I bet staying mindful during an argument allows us to choose conversation, discourse, and debate in ways that do not escalate the situation. So, begin with yourself first. When something is thrown your way, take a pause. When we are in critical mode, we rarely take the time to reflect. So you need to listen to. Listen to your partner or your friends carefully. Breathe and return to your center to become clear about your intentions. What is what it is you are arguing for or against? What outcome are you hoping for? Can you release the attachment to that? If you are upset, you should try to calm down and cultivate a kind and accepting attitude. Your disposition can change the tenor of a conversation in an instant. As the first step toward diffusing the argument, it's good to try to agree on what it is you are trying to resolve. Many arguments can be avoided altogether when we realize, when we realize, we were talking about some something about the same issue to begin with, or simply it's not something worth arguing about. It's worth bearing in mind, if only to avoid getting drawn into long fights. You will never win. There's never a good reason to argue at cross purposes, unless your purpose is to make someone cross. But if the disagreement does persist, you will have to speak your truth, even when it's hard, without fear of judgment or retribution. But 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 you know, you should remember to respond from the heart first and the head second. Remain calm and try to be respectful of the other person, even if you deeply disagree with his or her position or stance. By keeping an open mind, I guess you will find a peaceful resolution. Second, in a family row, the secret to avoiding the same old arguments with your loved ones. And exiting the cycle of negativity is that you should create a list of the lovely things they do, no matter how small, that you can be thankful for. So to perk up your relationship, rather than focusing on what annoys you, you'd better elevate the small details of their thoughtfulness, making a big deal out of it when your parents 
or siblings do something positive, or when your partner cooks you a meal. Gratitude may provide the everyday dose of spackle that keeps you glued together over the long haul, and it will motivate your kith and kin towards acts of kindness. Besides, it is advisable to abolish sweeping accusations such as "you never," "you only," and "you always," because they are loaded with negativity. Do you notice the difference between "I would love it if you could do the dishes this evening," "I'm really tired," and "you never do the dishes"? Hmm. And that is the end of my answer.